recording. All right, welcome, Unit 9 Review through Zoom here on a rainy Monday, President's Day. Um, looking through the review, uh, it looks like the, the problems that you're seeing here are going to be very on par with some of the things that you're going to see on the exam. You got to think about this exam being very narrowly focused. We talked about that in class where it's very often the case that your U might end up being the denominator of the entire fraction so that you can use a one over U form. And uh, it's also quite possible that you're going to see quite a few inverse trig forms. One of the things that I wanted to kind of draw your attention to um, kind of early is a problem down the list a little bit, number seven. I've already had a few of you kind of uh, email me about uh, what's going on with seven? I didn't teach it, blah, blah, blah. And you're right. I, I didn't. And there is a, um, a fact, you know, the, I think the, the reason why I, I tend to do this sometimes is I like to preview problems that we're going to potentially see down the road. But I will show you something very quickly to this right now. Um, the basic idea of this problem, if we were to integrate A to the x power with respect to x. That would be the general form. The formula for this is very similar to the, uh, the derivative of a to the x with one small exception. So here's what your integration formula is going to be. Now, if you recall, I'm going to write up here, and if I need to erase it later, I can. We learned this from last semester that the derivative of a to the x was equal to the natural log of a times a to the x, All right? And if you kind of stretch yourself a little bit and think about, well, how would this look if the a were the number e? Well, you know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x but it doesn't have this ln in front of it, but yet it certainly could because if a were e, ln of e would be, of course, one. So it does kind of pan out. The only thing that's really different about the integration formula is that you would offset that ln of a, so you end up dividing by it. And there's an easy proof to, for this, but I'm not gonna worry so much about it. Um, and I'm going to tell you what, if by some chance this particular problem or one like it shows up on the exam, I'll be sure that I put on the board not only this formula, the basic, you know, just a to the x, but I'll also put the chain rule version, or I'm sorry, u substitution version, which would just look like this. It's one of those deals where the u would be located in the exponent, his derivative would have to be present so that you can then integrate, and you essentially get the same thing, 1 over ln of a times a to the u plus c. So, you know, I hope that doesn't bother anybody. I, I don't want to throw something at you that you're definitely not prepared for, but this, this is very simple. It's just a, a slightly bit more complicated than e to the x because it has this 1 over ln of a that goes out in front. But these tend to not show up on the AP exam because it, it, it's so closely related to being able to memorize and the college board doesn't like, <coughs> excuse me, doesn't like to do that because they feel like kids will miss a lot of points because they don't memorize stuff and that's not what their focus is about. Um, it wouldn't bother me as a teacher because I would just kind of drill all these things into your minds and, and you guys would get ready regardless because you're, you're, you know, you're all that good. So let's go ahead and finish number seven just to make sure we understand it. So I'm gonna put a little line here to separate my formulas from my work. And then in this problem, we're gonna do a U substitution. And I hope that it's kind of obvious what your U is going to be. It will be the exponent of the three. So we'll use X squared. So the derivative of that would be two times X with your DX, of course, as always. And at this point, we can take satisfaction in the fact that this x dx that we see right here is present in the original problem. And it can serve as our du if we're able to fix that 2 to, a, to an extent. And of course, we're able to by offsetting like we always have. 
and then you just read the formula. All right, you just read the formula. Uh-oh, screen sharing has stopped. Let me see if I can fix this. Not sure what happened. <laughs> uh, I know what happened. It's my stupid uh, crash of smart notebook. The stuff that happens in class also happens on Zoom. I'll get it back up here. Meanwhile, you have to look at my ugly picture there. And where's the meeting? Here's the meeting. Here's the meeting screen share. Okay, we should be. We should be back. Okay, but I've lost my beautiful picture, and yes, I've lost all the wonderful work for this problem, but no biggie, no biggie, I'll recreate it. I'm just going to rewrite the, uh, that formula for the A to the U form, and usually I only crash one time. So this is what we've got, if you recall. That's what we're going for, at least. So then in this problem, we decided that we would let u be the x squared, du is equal to 2x dx, and uh, we're all set to go, right? We're going to go ahead and call this 1 over 2. That's what we're offsetting with. And then we have this 1 over ln of a that's going to serve as our um, extra little coefficient and the a in this problem is of course three so you'd have one over the natural log of three and then of course we finish up with our a to the u which is just three to the x squared plus c all right i'm going to open up the chat to see if anybody's got any questions looks like we're pretty good you guys um Like I said, if there's anything that's problematic, whether it's a technical thing or if you um, have a question that you want to type in the chat, feel free to do so. Um, this problem here, I mean, there's a variety of ways that you could write this 2 ln of 3. I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but it, it is possible that you could call this 1 over the natural log of 9. Hopefully you see that that 2 being a coefficient can also act as the power of 3. Um, the 3 to the x squared could be all in the numerator above that ln of 9, um, or it could be written afterwards with a time sign. So I think at that point, you'd be pretty good to, to start matching things up. And, and that's really how you would handle an a to the u form. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, they're not really all that more difficult than this. They typically consist of a number base to a pretty chill exponent. And that derivative of the exponent, it's going to be present in front, except for maybe a constant. And that's it. That's it. I hope, I hope that's okay, you guys. I don't want you to be stressed by that. All right. Uh, what do you guys think in the chat? Uh, got any questions? Any problem numbers off of the review that you've been kind of messing around with and are like, ah, I don't like that. I know it's always hard to be the first. All right, Vince, way to save us. We're gonna take a look at number 15. So, right up here, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, I want to make sure that everybody's tuned in to at least one type of strategy for this. Um, I want to see who could be the first one to say yes or no in the chat. Will we use long division? 
Yes or no? Oh, Caroline, all over it with the no. All over it with the no. Nice job. Now, can somebody else who is not named Caroline briefly say in the chat why we won't use long division? And you can abbreviate and, and talk in all sorts of abbreviated ways. Why would we not use long division? All right, Arvin. Arvin says denominator's power is greater than the numerator. Perfectly exp explained. Perfect. Um, you want to make sure that you don't waste your time with long division if it's not going to work. You know, just understand that that numerator, that power has to either be equal to or greater. And the great thing about it is you'll always use long division in that situation. You don't have to second guess from there. So with this one, you probably are starting to think that maybe completing the square would be an approach because you have that trinomial denominator. So, and that's a perfectly fine way to think about this, but because the numerator is a little bit busier than just our typical friend, you know, the, the constant that we're used to seeing, we probably ought to think about, well, what, what if we let this whole denominator be u? So if we, if we do that, we would get the derivative of 2x plus 2, right? And then we look at the top and think, gosh darn it, look how close we are to this being 2x plus 2. That would be a, a wonderful, happy occasion if this thing was 2x plus 2. So we basically say, we are going to make that happen. We're going to say, I'm going to take this minus 5, and if I want this to be a plus 2, I'm going to add 7 to it. Well, obviously, we just did something terrible here, and we added 7 to the numerator and made it a completely different problem. But we can fix that if we subtract 7. And I'm doing this all within separate fractions and separate integrations because I don't have a lot of room in this box. But if, if that bothers you, you know, you could think of the minus 7 being written just immediately after the plus 7. Verify that this all would reduce to 2x minus 5. Of course it would if the 7s cancel. And then you'd break apart at the minus. And now at this point, you've got a situation where you're just simply going to say, hey, um, we are going to uh, use a variety of methods on this. We're going to use simple u substitution on the left side. And then probably a change of or complete the square on the right side. Now, this is what uh, kind of worries me a little bit, especially when we're not all like together. Um, if I were to just jump right to the answer for this particular problem and stand by, I'm having some trouble with my pens. Now I'm okay. If I jump right to this answer, I want you to realize that it's this easy. And I, I really think that most, if not all of you, probably see that. The u is going to be the whole bottom. The derivative is 2x plus 2. That's exactly what this is. There's nothing to offset with. Everybody's happy. And we're not going to go into this and say, hmm, would x have to, could x, I'm sorry, take on a value where this is negative? Maybe, maybe not. I, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to put absolute values on it and say, so be it. So then I think our larger amount of work is going to surround the second integration. So we're going to do our three amigos, and we'll start with two, one, and when we square one, we get one. So uh, that would mean that um, x squared plus 2x will add a one after the 2x plop down our plus two, and then we'll immediately subtract one so that we have balanced that expression. And then we learned that all of this would factor into x plus one squared. This would become a plus one. And that looks like the arctan form that we're certainly hoping to achieve, right? And in further investigating, you see that your a squared is one, so a is one. 
your u squared is x plus one squared, so your u is x plus one. The derivative of u is going to be the derivative of x, so du equals dx. Nothing to offset with. So, hey, what do you say? Let's, uh, let's write an answer, huh? So I'm going to drop down that logarithm from the previous integral. And it looks like there's a minus that's going to plop in front. This 7 is just a constant that would have come out in front. And normally I would have probably put the 7 over an A because the arctan needs an A. But since A is 1, it's not going to really amount to anything. So I just have a 7 in front and then arctan of U over A. And again, since the A is 1, I can just put this x plus 1 right like that. So hopefully, does that help? I don't know, Vince, probably answers your question or anybody else that um, was kind of curious about, about that one. Um, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult for me to sort of uh, qualify each of the problems on this exam as far as like its difficulty level, because, you know, my view of difficult and your views of difficult, I know, are, aren't always the same. Each of one of you has your own sort of opinion on what you have more trouble with. But I've always been sort of in the camp that the hardest kind of integral question on the Unit 9 exam is one very much like this. It's one where you would have to arbitrarily add a constant or subtract a constant only to do that opposite operation to split it into two. And as far as I can remember, there's only one like this. And it doesn't stand out as a problem that a lot of students have had trouble with. So um, I was looking back at the previous uh, results of this exam, and it's actually a pretty good test. It's, it's kind of like in the upper half of its average. I think you guys have done a pretty good job on both of the quizzes so far. Um, I know you don't have the second quiz in your possession, but you can always stop by and grab that um, prior to you taking the test, you know, whether it's in the morning tomorrow or the afternoon, or for you seventh period people, you can come and get it Wednesday. So um, I know that my meeting only has 10 minutes here, so we could at least kind of start a problem and then um, jump on a uh, another meeting. I don't understand why it says I got 10 minutes because Oh, yeah, I do, because I was an idiot. I started this meeting like a long time before 2 o'clock to get things set up. So um, I know that this will end up booting us off, and the next meeting said it wasn't supposed to start to like 2.45 or 2.50, but I can always start it, and you can always join it. So don't feel like you have to wait until that second meeting time. Just join it like you would have joined the first one using that second link. So, all right, give me another one, guys. We're having fun, right? Yeah, yeah, we are. Don't, don't even deny it. Is there another problem on the review that anybody wants to take a look at? Anything at all. Crickets. I hear crickets. All right. Let's take a look at number 12. Then we can move on to 21. That is not a problem. 12 is just above number 15 here. Um, and we probably would, yeah, we should be able to get this one easily in that uh, before our meeting runs out. 12 has got completing the square written all over it. It's about the only thing that we can do, and that is due most in part to the fact that we don't have any kind of number or variable uh, up in the numerator. Even if there was a number up in the numerator, like a 2 or a 3 in front of that dx, that doesn't change anything because you're going to bring that number out in front anyway, and then you've got essentially this very same integral. So completing the square, but we do have to clean it up a wee bit. So I'm going to factor out a negative, and then I'm going to write this in descending order. 
as such. Now, I know a lot of students get kind of confused. Well, what do you do about the eight? Well, I'm gonna tell you, let's not put that eight in with that factored out negative. I've, I've seen this work where you did do that, where students did do that, but it gets kind of confusing about what two constants that you wanna combine. And in, in the event that the eight is outside, it's going to be a lot easier for you to see what's going on. So now we can go ahead and do the three amigos. They would be negative two, negative one, and one. So we'll add one, we'll put a plus one right here. And then we have to have the presence of mind to understand that that's not really um, a positive one that we just introduced to this problem. It's really a negative one because of this factoring. So we compensate by putting a plus one. Um, and if you think about it, well, you, wouldn't you rather have a nine than a seven <laughs> over there? Um, not that I would, you know, not ever think about giving you a non-perfect square, but usually it works nicer. So where do we go next? Let's rewrite this thing. Let's call this the integration of dx over the square root of, and then eight plus one will come first, that's nine, then our minus, and then we can see that this will all factor into x minus one squared. Remember that you can use the second amigo, negative one right here, to achieve that value. All right, I'll uh, finish off my radical here, and I think it becomes pretty clear that your a squared is nine, so that makes a three. Your u squared is x minus one squared, so your u is x minus one. You ask yourself, what form is this? And hopefully we all realize it's an arc sine form, right? Arc sine does not have the one over a, so we won't need that. And the du, I'll write this in purple real quick. The du here, of course, doesn't really mean much. Nothing to offset. So the only thing left to do is to write our answer, arc sine of that u over the a plus your c. All right, so even problems like this that initially look a little scary with the completing the square aren't so bad. And I, I know what a lot of you guys are probably thinking, and most of my students at least think that once they get this, the completing the square going and they sort of reassemble, whoops, they reassemble the integral here, they're like, I'm good to go. I'm, I'm probably not gonna miss the problem. But I, I know getting from here to here is such a, a critical issue. And, and the sad thing about that, like if this was a free response question, is you know, making a mistake, a vital mistake early in the problem can kind of sacrifice some points um, later on. But just really trust your ability to complete the square. I'm gonna tell you, you guys are a good group. You're, you're definitely one of the top two or three classes that I've had in the last eight years now, um, nine actually with you know, counting you, that don't tend to freak out with this method. You just kind of chill with it, you relax, you just let it go and just see what happens. You know? and, I've had groups where I knew that it was like pulling teeth and and despite that fact, they still seem to come through unit nine okay and, and didn't do much damage. But I think you guys are gonna be fine, I really do. I'd, I would tell you if it wasn't the case. Um, before we hit um, Before we hit number 21, I'm gonna see if I can help my mic a little bit. I, I noticed that it seems like my meter isn't running quite as high, so I'll just try to talk into the mic because I know that you guys can only raise your volume so high. Uh, before we hit 21, uh, Caroline asks, any tips to tell if a problem will be use substitution, natural log, or inverse trig before starting it? Wow, that is the million dollar question. Um, you know, it's like use substitution and LN, those two ideas kind of go hand in hand because an LN question is usually driven by the U being the entire denominator. So what I would do is in the back of your mind, take the denominator as U, take its derivative and see if you find that result in the numerator. And if you do find it 
entirely up in the numerator, then that's going to drive your your thought process into going with a one over u form, which results in the natural log absolute value of u. If by some chance you um, do your do your u substitution in the bottom and, and your derivative just doesn't even match the top. In other words, you have a different number of terms or your po powers of x's are different, then you, you've got more to consider. And that's when it gets kind of difficult because you might break it apart into two separate problems like the one that uh, we did in number 15 um, or a strategy of that sort. I really think that if you see a problem that's going to be an inverse trig form, those are going to tend to be a little bit more obvious. But I, I think that you, you guys want to not panic when you look at a problem and within the first 10 or 15 seconds, you're not like quickly um, confident on what it's going to use as a strategy because that's what integration is. You ask any of my BC students, they're going to say, oh, yep, that's what integration is all about. I'm going to look at a problem. I might try a couple of things. So, and I'm very conscious of that, you guys, because I know your first thought is, well, I'm not going to finish the test if I have, you know, 15 multiple choice problems that I got to think about like that. No, I've got some of them that are very recognizable that, that you'll be able to plow through within a minute's time. But, you know, the two or three or four that are a little bit more challenging, it's okay to like try some things, see if they don't work, and then go back to the drawing board. So, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully Caroline, that helps a little bit. Um, answering your question, um, but that, that's a really good question, and, and that's certainly always going to be on your mind, even next year into BC, you know, when we have a few more strategies, it's just, you're, you're going to have to compartmentalize those different options, so, all right, well, I think what I am going to do, because my little clock timer here says that we're going to get cut off in one minute, I'm going to stop this particular Zoom stream, and I will open the other one. I bet if you guys wait 120 seconds, you'll be able to join the other one. In fact, I think I got it set up where you can join it even before I start it. But I'll